session. And our first speaker is Mitro Valin from Uppsala University, and he will speak about non-local geometry of beta algebras and monodromy bootstrap. So, thank you. Hello, yes, good. So hello everyone, <laughs> yes, yeah. So I'm going to speak about this and this are the people who I'm working with, great thanks to them. I announced uh, what I'm planning to do about this program on the same conference 2015 in London. Uh, and uh, this picture is actually from that slides from that conference, they are not new slides. Uh, the story starts from realizing that uh, integrable systems that we are working uh, with, they have equations that are non-local equations. What do I mean by non-locality here? That we have the same function appearing in an equation which, have, uh, which is related in two different places of the complex plane. This is non-locality. And to make sense of the equation, we need to know how to connect the two points. If function is analytic, there is no problem. It's whatever path you choose, ch ch choose for connecting, we give, uh, get the same result. But uh, if there is a branch point, then uh, making in two different ways, uh, moving, give you two different things, and then uh, this equation st suddenly starts to, uh, stops making sense. Because uh, what do you mean by writing such an equation? Appearance of such a branch catch is actually quite a severe thing, a severe constraint on what you can do. And many classical work on integrability from the beginning assume three options, rational, trigonometric, and elliptic. Like there is even some theorems, but these theorems actually hiddenly uh, contain assumptions that the functions uh, like do can a single valued functions. And there are quite a many communities that work in this domain. Ellie mentioned there are hyper elliptic cases. I'm very curious what they're actually doing there. What we know for sure that in a DCFT integrability, branch points are present. It was completely convincing after the, the time we realized what is the analytic structure of uh, dressing factor, BS dressing factor. Since then, it was clear that branch points are unavoidable. But exactly in this form, uh, it became uh, a part of the day life uh, when we were studying Y system on, on mirror T hook. Uh, this was not actually that much during conferences in 2009. People were showing picture of Tihut, which was nice. But I mean, uh, those who worked knew that there is a problem uh, passing far away from your region. And there were some claims that my system is dead and discussion about that. Um, so for the CFT, it's reality. And in I kind of try to say that instead of saying that it is reality which is problematic, let's embrace it and use to our advan advantage. So the idea of monodromy strap is quite simple. Uh, we say, OK, we have branch point. We will even postulate the existence. And then we take our system, go around branch point, and require that something nice happens with our system. So star here means some symmetry transformation, which one we can choose and define different models. This is a very simple idea. So this is actually a crossing equation in reality, uh, implemented in a quite strange way. Uh, well, it's easy to say this phrase, but there are a lot of questions to ask how to implement the idea. And when you try, you soon realize that you're asking always the wrong questions because system is not the one that you are used to. Uh, the goal of this talk to explain a framework of uh, ideas which allows you to start asking correct questions about monodromy bootstrap for this situation. And this is what I really want to convince today. Uh, before going into framework, 
I want to tell you that uh, already in 2015 and before there were two proofs of concept existing. First, of course, is IDS5 uh, quantum spectral curve. Uh, in fact, in our paper, there is a, chapter, there is a section which uh, people uh, really use or ignore, or usually they ignore, because this chapter, the section doesn't help to compute any anomalous dimension. But in fact, uh, it is about uh, this idea written in a different way. And uh, so, so we did not use this idea to derive uh, this spectral curve, we used TBA, but this, this give, uh, gave an inspiration. And then uh, just mimicking this inspiration, uh, it's possible to derive Hubbard. Uh, with all details, uh, we did it only recently, but the questions themselves I already put in the, my, my talk on JST 2015. Uh, so this is like baby version, the main difference appearance of function f which is because the central charge is non-zero, and this is important. Without this, this you can't do Hubbard. Uh, I will speak about this later. So this is, these are two inspirational examples telling that you're not crazy, things sh can work, and let's try to make them work in general. And this is the general goal of this program. Given a symmetry algebra, some Lie algebra G, apply monodribute strap ID and get some spectral curves of a DCXT type. First big problem is really what is Q, we see here there are some Q systems around, whatever they are, but what is the Q system for, for, for given Lie algebra? And this is not something that is uh, uh, clear at all. And most of the talk today actually will spend on explaining given Lie algebra what is Q system and we will do arbitrary Lie algebras, uh, uh, simple Lie algebras in fact. Uh, and then, after I explain this, you will have good uh, uh, set of ideas, hopefully, and it will be much easier to explain uh, how monodromy strap work, and, well, there will be some more de declarative statement about uh, idea 3 CFT spectral curve conjecture. When you will do all this business, actually, there are many spin-offs. This spin-off is about uh, both rigorous and efficient improvement of studying variety of uh, uh, integrable systems, which not necessarily a DCFT, like rational speed chains and so on. Uh, we have quite a few results there, uh, which, which are quite interesting by, the, by the, their own sake. So this is how my plan. And so let us start. Uh, we start by just discussing what I would mean by Q system. What do I want? Uh, the simplest thing to keep in mind is rational spin chain. Mathematically, it's rep some representation of Youngian algebra. So you do your transfer matrix, uh, construct set of commuted quantities. Uh, we call this set of commuted quantities beta algebra. Some people call it Baxter algebra also. And um, you kind of often say that commuting quantities is, is landmark of integrability. But here is this funny part that if your Hilbert space is finite dimensional, having commuting quantities give you zero in, in knowledge. Uh, why? Because, look, you have just big matrix, okay? Imagine that this matrix has non-degenerate spectrum. The worst possible integrable model to have zero degeneracies, right? It exists as an integrable model, but uh, so let's take this case the uh, spectrum is non-degenerate of this matrix. Then by just simply taking power of this matrix, you for sure generate all possible commuted quantities you can ever have. It's only when system is infinite, it's becoming a non-trivial task. So saying you have find the dimensional Hilbert space computing quantities, you say nothing, it's always true. Uh, so integrability doesn't really lie in, in existence of commuting quantities when it's finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. Yes? Do you see my idea of why it's a little bit more uh, because of course, uh, uh, Aha, and this is the next point I'm going to make. Uh, I also make it provocative for the reason, right? Uh, so uh, it's not about commuting quantities themselves, but the fact that you can uh, organize commuting operators into functions of spectral parameters. And this function of spectral parameter should satisfy quite non-trivial functional relation. And when actually you see this, then it's actually integrable, not before. Uh, and as much as mentioned, of course, it eventually can be equivalent to beta equations. Uh, so to see what I mean by this uh, philosophy, SU2 spin chain with uh, periodic but with uh, diagonal twist uh, in periodic boundary conditions, so just to make less degeneracy, 
And so M, M magnum sector, everything standard. And uh, for this pin chain, uh, we can construct uh, two Baxter Q operators. So I actually have to cite here very many different groups present in this uh, audience uh, for, for how we can do this. And uh, we have two of them, actually. Uh, I will call it red and yellow. The, during this talk, there will be a lot of red. There will be always red and yellow skews. So this is a typical example of red. This is a typical example of yellow. So this is polynomial Gm modified by this factor, and this is other polynomial by new hyperfactor. So, by, uh, so this is just some matrices uh, which are polynomials in U, and their determinant uh, should be equal to U to the power L. So we call it Vronsky and beta equations. So this is non-trivial functional relation. You see here shift plus I over to shift by minus I over to is actually already non-local equation. I emphasize this. Non-local equation already here. And I don't really focus on that this should be some function here. It can be any function. I focus on the fact that this here is identity matrix. Uh, so Q and Q, white and uh, or red and yellow Q are commuting matrices. But if you randomly choose commuting matrices, that this type of expression will unlikely give you identity. Even more, suppose you fix Q uh, somehow, and then you try to find Uh, yellow Q such that right hand side is identity. And then again, you will file, fail unless zeros of this Q satisfy beta equations. So uh, this is really non trivial constraints, uh, which is for me today will be really uh, how I see integrability. It will be basically a definition. Um, By doing uh, so, I said about matrices. Uh, for the rest of the talk, I, however, will stick to eigenvalues. So I just wanted to make like allusion to the question that we won commuting quantities, but eventually it will be eigenvalues still. And we proceed. So you can think about them as eigenvalues uh, in the following. Uh, right. So there are two bonuses about doing this logic. So first, that there is actually rigorous statements about completeness for these systems. Uh, those who try to solve beta equations know that they have problems. So this equation doesn't have problems. It always have correct number of solutions. This was proven by Mohin Tarasov of Varshinka 2009. Uh, and bonus number two, actually, if you have two Q, Q functions, you can uh, easily construct all the transfer matrices. So it's very compact formulation. So this is type of Q system. Uh, very simple one, which you want to do something similar for any simple Lie algebras. And this is what I mean by Q system. Uh, so uh, because, because I will be too very general, uh, I want to uh, slightly uh, change notations. So I want to reabsorb this, this uh, parameter inside Q functions. I do it by introducing dressing factor. So I say my polynomial time addressing factor should be another function that determinant is equal to one. So dressing factor satisfies some crossing equations. It's not a crossing I would speak today about, but it's another type of crossing. Uh, right, so I just read definition. So I will not have explicitly any source terms like this. I will be hidden in the definition of Q function. So it will be less number of functions to speak. Yes. Uh, this one, yes. I did it to, to speak less about details, yes. But everything calls without SSL, but just have to make more clauses, yes. No, it completely solves there as well. I just don't say about it. Its statement is fully fixed there as well. Um, uh, right. Uh, so this first thing, and second thing I want to uh, notice that this uh, red and uh, yellow functions are actually organized in a vector. Well, it's two-dimensional vector. so. You can guess that it's the uh, transform induction of SU2, and we have SU2 spin chain, so kind of relation, but in two dimensional system, it's hard to guess if it's accident or not. But anyway, this is a vector, and you can compute transfer matrices by doing these uh, nice wedges. So, so, sorry, like this, with different shifts. If shifts is like this, equal to one is the same determinant as here. So, mm, okay. Uh, so, this is type of equations we, uh, I won't really to generalize, and this one. And before even going to, to real work, I want to tell you philosophy of the generalization. So Q system is really about quantum mechanics versus classical mechanics. So uh, take uh, an energy conservation. It can be written as a quadratic equation for P. You can do it in this form. It's clear you have permutation symmetry. It's called Galois group of this quadratic equation, S2. 
Right? You can permute to Riemann sheets, and this is stack of a symmetry in our world. When you do quantization, you have Schrodinger equation, and uh, now it's really a wave function who is the uh, main, main character here. And there are, uh, like here, there are two solutions. There are also two solutions to this equation. But now it's quantum mechanics. You can do linear combination. It's called superposition. And symmetry is no longer S2, but GL2, uh, which is Lie uh, algebra already. But also in quantum mechanics, we always projective. We do not care about phases. So real symmetry is PGL2, whose Lie algebra is SL2. Uh, so this quantum mechanics in the integrable world, we also have uh, higher order equations. We, we can consider lux matrix, n by n lux matrix, right? Uh, classical spectral curve. Then symmetry will be Sn. And there, is, there are some way to quantize either honestly or uh, philosophically. Anyway, this is at least uh, philosophically it's Baxter equation, but there are examples when we can prove it. Uh, and uh, again, this is the same story. There are n solutions. We can take any linear combination. Uh, so it's a, we don't care about normalization, so it's projective uh, GLN, whose Lie algebra is SLN. So the whole point that when you quantize, your permutation group become uh, Lie algebra. And general story is the following. Then you have some Coxter graph, well, Dinkin diagram for Lie algebra. Then it has actually two things, classical things, which is a well group or Coxter group of this graph. So it's a system of reflection are associated to nodes. Simplest case is permutation. On the other hand, it's have associated Lie algebra, and building Q system is actually uh, uh, updating this group uh, to something, uh, to update something that transform induction of well group to something that transform induction of corresponding Lie algebra. This is really what happens when you build Q system. And now I will tell you, considering simply a lace case. Just a disclaimer, doing GLN is boring. Um, because it, that doesn't show you all the important features. You, you can easily miss the point when you do GLN. Uh, but anyway, I, I will tell you the point. So if you don't uh, want to focus on GLN, you can do it in your head. And then I tell you, OK, this, this, is, this is the point. Uh, okay. So I remind, we want something. So SL2 is a Dinkin diagram with one node. Associated to node, we have two key functions, this, uh, whose runs can is equal to one. Uh, I have to introduce something what's called QQ bar system in the literature. It's the following thing. You have your favorite Dinkin diagram. To each node of Dinkin diagram you associate one Q function, and which is called red Q function in this talk, and also one more Q function, which is called yellow. And you write what's called QQ bar system, which is for once kind of red and yellow function at the given node of Dinkin diagram, equal to product of all Q functions at the node adjacent uh, to your node. So here it will be, for instance, three neighbors, and they will be product of three Q functions. For the moment, yes. Uh, it's to start. Eventually, it will come to non simply laced. Uh, now, for the young part of the audience who did not see this argument before, I will explain how this uh, goes to beta equations. What you have to do, you have to take this equation shifted by i over 2. So this bracket means uh, 1 in the, uh, so plus means shift by i over 2. 2 in the bracket means shift by i, like twice by i over 2. This is also 2 here. It's not clear, but it's 2. So you shift this equation by i over 2, get this equation. I shift by minus i over 2, get this, this equation. And then you actually consider it as the zeros of, of red q function. <coughs> it becomes zero, and then the determinant becomes product of uh, on diagonal, and then when you divide, this yellow function disappears, so you get this ratio, and this is a beta equation. Uh, this is how a QQ bar system is related to beta equation. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, so now we start to go to play mutation game. Uh, so I call it for this talk mutation game because it's very similar to cluster algebras. Like some of you know what is cluster algebra related to Y system, for instance. Uh, so it's not the same thing, but it's very similar logic, though. Uh, mutations are known by many different names, by many different groups. Uh, so it's, it's people doing this all, all on top again, claiming it is every time different name. Uh, so what is mutation game? So you take your favorite Dinkin diagram, write explicitly QQ bar system, and uh, define mutation in the node SA, like somewhere here. As a, uh, as a following operation, you basically take, uh, or let's for instance here, mutation at node 2. So you take your Q function, red Q function, and replace it with a corresponding yellow Q function. But also, if you do this replacement, you have to update your QQ relation. Uh, 
So you see here we have Q2, Q2, uh, Q2 in three places. So we have to make three pl places for replacement. And by doing this replacement, we actually modify three equations. When we modify three equations, uh, this means that uh, uh, the role of yellow function should change. Because of course, this Q1 bar will not sell uh, yellow Q1 bar, this one, yellow Q1, is not going to solve new equation. A new different function will solve this equation. So what will happen when you mutate function at given node, you also affect uh, what would be called yellow function. It will generate new Q functions in this way eventually. So it's important to realize. And uh, so this is one mutation step. And the game is to make mutation again and again and again and again and again and again until you reach some saturation point. Either you are tired or you exhausted all possibilities. There are two options. Uh, and this, if you're clever enough, you can exhaust those possibilities before you are tired. Uh, so uh, to become clever, we have to consider a classical case. Classical case is called character limit when Q function just a twist to power minus IU and times some number which I'm not will be caring about. This is called character limit. In this case, all the transfer matrices become characters. It's exactly when quantum mechanics become a classical thing. <coughs> In this case, if you will do mutation, uh, first of all, Q function are replaced by uh, uh, Y. It's not Y function, it's just numbers or variables, which do not depend on spectral parameter, uh, which de define your twist. And when you just solve this equation for, uh, in terms of Y, you see that Y has this uh, transformation. And if you know a little bit of uh, character theory, it's actually well group action on, on, on just simple character. So character is a trace of a group element. And you can take diagonal to the group element, some number to the power of Cartan generator. And so if well group you locked on, on the Cartan, it's exactly what will happen with your wise. So I, this is like standard fact. And just, you just can refer to any textbook on the subject to know that uh, all this, uh, this beast will transform under action of, of normal well group by in normal standard way that you absolutely are aware how it will go. And then you can to ask the question, uh, how, what will be orbit of this tuple of Ys? Uh, and the answer is nice. It's a uh, number of elements of well group. This means uh, that well group act uh, freely. There is no well reflection that stabilizes any tuple. It will always change, change, change until it exhausts the whole orbit of the well group. This is good. And, uh, but more interesting question is uh, if you focus on particular Y, like Y2, for instance, and you just uh, record what possible values Y2 happens on the way of mutations, it will be less than the whole well group much less, and you can ask how many. And the answer is also known. It will be length of the well orbit of A's fundamental weight. So probably you know that Dinkin diagram for each node, there is a fundamental weight who makes some orbits, but also it has associated fundamental representation of uh, Lie algebra. So I just give you two example, like uh, this Dinkin diagram for SL4. So, and here these numbers actually answer this question. So Y1, will achieve four different values on, on the while orbits. Y2 will achieve six, this is four. So it's binomial coefficients and probably you can, and also the dimension of corresponding representations. So in your own framework, you can probably uh, understand why it's so. But here, here for SO8 is more interesting. So this is vector representation, it will be eight guys. This two spinners, which also eight, there is triality. But here, we actually will have 24 from uh, this Y, uh, will be 24 different values of this Y. y. Y24, well, it's actually H choose 2 minus 4. So H choose 2 is anti symmetrization of a vector. This is what this representation is. It's this node corresponds to adjoint representation, which is anti symmetric vector representation. So this is 24. But Cartan elements are never in the well orbit of raising and lowering operators. So raising and lowering operators can always mix up by, by, by well transformations. But Cartan can't. Uh, and so the answer is here 24, uh, not tw uh, 24. But anyway, this is the answers, and this is the answer for mutation game uh, on, on, on D-series, for instance. Uh, and now, after we studied classical game, we are going to go to full quantum version of the game. Full quantum version of the game saying that now these two functions are uh, function spectral parameter, and mutation means actually solving this finite difference equation in some favorite way, and replacing so red function with corresponding solution. And here the fun starts because this is first order equation that hence any solution is solution of inhomogeneous equation, this inhomogeneous equation, plus 
any addition of a homogeneous solution. So alpha uh, can be any number in reality. And even more, it can be periodic function. But for today, I will speak only about its being number. Uh, right, and so we have ambiguity what to do. There are two things to do. One option is to uh, work hard and find a way to constrain the ambiguity. For instance, it reduces back twists. It says now Q functions, let's say, will be Q functions will be some twist time another function of U. And uh, yellow twist is different from a twist, so it's very different asymptotic. So by fixing pure asymptotic, you can fix uh, your favorite solution. There are also other, even randomly ad hoc ways to, uh, to fix your solutions. This is possible. Uh, and then there is quite a non-trivial statement, which requires some work, uh, not some, but serious work, actually, uh, to show that if you uh, fix your solution by some tool, good tool, of course, then you actually, even in this complicated functional case, you do exactly like in characters. It will be the same well orbital like characters, and you reproduce what uh, our friends uh, call Hasse diagram. And so this is explicit realization of fail orbit of characters. So you can open their paper, see the indices, and even understand what's happening with indices. And so, uh, OK, so but, and by, by knowing that is how the characters transform, you of course, can do, do the same Hasse diagrams for any algebras immediately. Uh, right. And in the, because it's the same game, you'll have exactly the same number for Q functions. But now, and this is this something which we, we always were uh, not willing to do, but re uh, recently realized it's another feature, but not a bug in the story. We actually will allow to get linear combination of homogeneous part freely. That means that every time we do mutation, we allow to add anything we want, and every time it will be something different, randomly. Just on the mathematica, it's easy to do. And so let's see what happens in this case with mutation. Uh, so if you start from some uh, red Q function, you have a linear combination of two guys. Uh, but you have to do mutation negation. Mutation again, actually, it can be linear combination with any coefficient uh, with only requirement that uh, projectively these two numbers are not the, the same as alpha 1. Because I don't care about normalizations, uh, I, I only make projective statements. It's like homogeneous coordinates uh, in projective space. So ratio of alpha prime beta prime should be different from alpha. This only requirement, otherwise it can be arbitrary. And so in particular, alpha prime beta prime can be any, any I mean, alpha can be any, so alpha prime beta prime uh, is completely unconstrained by the choice of red Q uh, two steps before. So something different changes. So there is a good analogy for this. It's uh, those who knows for you Stokes phenomena. You see, you have to think about uh, red Q as a small solution and uh, yellow Q as a big solution. Uh, when you start with a solution which is small in a given stock sector, uh, it's uniquely fixed. Then if you go to the next stock sector by crossing stock's line, then solution become big, uh, big, but it can have a small solution as addition, but it's asymptotic is, is still uh, under control. But if you can st cross another stock sector, I mean, you're lost. It can be anything after that. Uh, this is standard story from stock phenomena and WQB analysis. And by the way, this is not only analogy. By ODIM, it's precise uh, equivalence between what I'm doing and what is done in ODIM uh, equivalent. And this is how we, we actually use things to prove uh, statements. We do ODIM uh, dual, do things there because there it can be done rigorously, and come back to get our results. Uh, right, so you, then because this number is arbitrary, you can go on and go on, and of course, it will go forever. And asking how many uh, answers you will get is meaningless, infinite. But you still notice that it will be always linear combination of two functions, only two. So can you ask what is linear span of, uh, so you have some seed, red Q, and then you do mutation for, for eternity. And you can ask, OK, this is some uh, functions. How many linearly independent functions are there? And the answer will be two. So we, we replace number of elements on the orbit by dimension of linear span, uh, which in this answer is two. And so we play the game. And uh, uh, for your convenience, I give you more examples because will be no numbers, more numbers is more convincing. Um, so I took two uh, SL type uh, Dinkin diagrams and two D type Dinkin diagrams and, um, and ask the question, okay, I take my Q function, do this mutation with possibility to add linear combinations. Uh, so I do superposition like a quantum mechanics really. And ask myself, okay, what will be dimension of linear span? 
So for A-type Dinkin diagrams, the answer is exactly the same as for, for, for orbit of corresponding character solution. So that's why I case is boring. You will not see the feature. But for these guys, this 24 becomes indeed 28. So the linear span will be bigger than the length of the corresponding quail orbit of a character. So Q function that you'll get actually will span the whole adjoint representation. And this is actually true for any diagram. You can even compute it by Mathematica experimentally, which uh, of course we do originally. Uh, or, or you can eventually you can prove the statement. Uh, so here are the numbers of uh, character uh, orbits, and this is dimensions of corresponding representations. So this is anti-symmetric, this is uh, three times anti-symmetrized. So the statement that Q functions are no longer well orbit of characters, but they actually uh, form rep corresponding representation of corresponding Lie algebra. And this is where updates comes. So this, uh, what, what we achieve, we replaced uh, uh, red Q functions, but a big column of functions. So you have a real big zoology of functions by now, like if you big to high algebra, it's exponentially many uh, guys, really. But what we achieved by this is that they form vectors that are in corresponding representation of the symmetry group, and we achieve covariance in description of beta algebra, which was not there before. It's covariant in the action of the symmetry group by now, very explicitly uh, away. And after we did this, uh, original QQ bar system will be replaced by statement from representation series. So, uh, so here we have red and yellow guys, and this is actually the first two components of this vector. And this runs can, but now this runs can become wedge of, the, of this two vector. And this product of leading coefficient becomes tensor product of corresponding representations. Vectoring. So this equality is what replaces uh, QQ bar system. By the way, this equation was first realized in this paper, and also here it was present. Uh, but they did uh, exactly the opposite of what we did. Uh, this started from DM. They, in DM, uh, it's more easy to understand why this is true. And then uh, they say, oh, first component of this equation is this equation. Hey, we get QQ bar system, we get beta equations. We are happy because people really wanted to get beta equations out of the consideration. What I'm telling you now, no, you should not be happy to have beta equations. You should actually get covariant description instead. Uh, and right, and this is very many functions and even more equations. Number of equations here is much more than number of functions. Actually, mutations close eventually to a finite linear span. So the fact that you can actually solve them is highly non-trivial. And the fact you can, and yet you can solve with uh, all the that function being functional freedom of, of uh, your solution. So there are still uh, as many, uh, as ma as many uh, non-fixed function basic equation as, as rank of your algebra. And uh, so I perceive this, uh, and, and eventually prove this by doing a representation series of, uh, let's say, uh, finite dimensional representation of a fine algebra. And you know, quantum affine is integrability, so uh, kind of I uh, speculate here, but stating that this equation is kind of like the Jan Baxter equation on the level of beta algebra. With no, if suppose if you do not know R matrix, you do not know all the stuff about uh, Greenfield doubles and so on. For instance, in, in the just 554 we do not know, right? After one loop, it's, it's, it's a big open question, like probably the main question, which is open. Uh, at least in, in my perspective. But nevertheless, you can replace the Baxter equation. Let, let's say this is Jan Baxter equation, if you wish, for a bit algebra. Uh, a bit gem is not, uh, we, we do non supersymmetric case for the moment. Uh, um, okay, uh, so. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, these equations uh, are good but we found more relations, much more relations, and we found geometric meaning of this. Uh, the fact that uh, these key functions uh, describe something which is called fused flag. So what it is? So by definition, flag, not fused flag by flag, is a homogeneous space of complexly group G by complex Borel subgroup. It's just a definition in mathematical literature. It has nice geometric interpretation, but it's just a definition. And uh, how we, we, we work with uh, right here definition. So how we work with homogeneous, how we can uh, parameterize homogeneous spaces. Well, in physics, it's called order parameter in phase transitions. We take your favorite ob object that transform an action of G, and then it's also invariant on action of B. If you want to break symmetry from G to B, you find order parameter, which is preserved by B, but changes under G. 
And then, uh, uh, so if, if this is an object who has B-stability group and uh, transform it on G, orbit of this object under G exactly uh, your homogeneous pan G quotient B. Uh, so let's do this for flux. So this, uh, it's, of course, it's clear that tensor product of these vectors will live in tensor product of a corresponding representation. So they live in big vector space. Highest weight vector in this big representation clearly annihilated by raising operators and in, uh, only rescaled by Cartan. So projectively, up to normalization, this highest weight vector is invariant on duction of B. Hence, the orbit, G orbit of, of this vector in this space projectively is precisely will be our G quotient B, will be our flux. And now rough claim that we are making that this uh, very special vector in this very big space lives on the orbit of, of highest weight by action of G. This is a rough claim, and this claim is very non-empty already, because what we can show that Q functions which live here form not arbitrary vectors, but null vectors, light cone vectors. Only possible is to be light cone. It can be only null plane. This is null three plane, and these two guys should be pure spin-offs. Nothing else is possible in integrability. But it's not all. This was rough claim. Well, exact claim is that it's fuse flux because I never sp spoke about spectral parameter here. But everybody depends on spectral parameter, and everybody non-locally, all equations are non-local. So this statement is actually true if you do small quantum shift each of each spectral parameter. So the statement the following is that uh, uh, this tensor product with this very specific shift uh, live on the orbit of some uh, G orbit of high straight vector if this vector P P1, P2, PR, has this property. The difference of 2P is plus or minus 1 uh, if they are adjacent Dinky nodes. Moreover, this should be true for all choices of such vector P, not only for one, but for all. And the, the statement for all is actually equivalent to beta equation. Uh, so uh, derivation of this fact is use of DAM. And remark uh, to connection to mathematics, you hear the word oper, nobody knows what is oper, so I tell you, oper is this guy. Okay, so now you know what is oper. Okay. Uh, find a difference oper. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so I hope you got an idea of what is a uh, big Q system on the flux. It's some geometric object of this type. And it's, it can be constructed after doing very many mutations, and it has have covariance and action of symmetry algebra. Uh, but it's a huge object. Is it even useful? So very quickly about usefulness of this object. Uh, uh, right, this is a repetition. Uh, we actually had this equation. To make use of this, I have actually have to re recall that there is a dressing factor and come back to original equation. So the answer is, for instance, uh, that uh, analog of beta equation is this uh, QQ system. This is a Drinfield polynomials now. Uh, it's equal to U to the power L for vector representation, one for all other nodes. It's simple spin chain. So uh, le le let's make this just uh, interesting claims for mathematics. Uh, it's, for the moment, it's proven only for a few cases. Otherwise, it will be conjectures. So QQ bar system is written here. It's original one. It's not all this green stuff which I generated. It's original one. Uh, original QQ bar system has the right number of solutions for generic values of parameters. And also bit equations as most likely has the right number of solutions for generic value of parameters. Both of them actually fail for specific values. In both cases, you actually have to babysit them to get correct answers. Uh, what is improvement that this new covariant system conjecturally have the right number of solution always. So it will capture, for instance, all correct uh, exceptional solution automatically, and uh, this will be a regular statement. And uh, then you can reformulate uh, with this one thing. Another thing that you can do all this machinery to reformulate bit equations and concentrate them in one node of Dinkin diagram using these big vectors, which are not that big on the ends of Dinkin diagram. And for instance, you can get uh, to Vronskin bit equation. Or for uh, SO2 in case, we got some interesting uh, Vronskin type bit equation using pure spinners. And it's the statement, we, for instance, conjecture by extremely extensive uh, check that this is always correct number of solution. And moreover, we, we can quickly generate uh, thousands of solutions to beta equations using these approaches. Uh, and of course, uh, the most uh, known for this audience is here what OT system. So this point that uh, uh, this is covariant, T function is invariant, 
And scalar product uh, of two covariant vectors, this is A and this is A star, contra gradient representation. This scalar product with appropriate shift generates a function which solves Hirota for any Dinkin diagram. And th this is new, so Ferranda Frati Kazakov did it for uh, uh, D, D case, uh, SO2N. We did uh, this, uh, also for SO2N, but also for E series, and I will show you now also for non simply lace case. Okay, uh, I will go very quickly to non simply lace case without much of details because we still have to do uh, monodromy bootstrap. Five minutes, wow, great. <laughs> yeah. But I started later, right? How much time do you need? Huh? 15? 15 minutes, okay. Uh, okay, non simple less case to very quickly. Uh, so in this case, first notice that Cartan matrix should be replaced by symmetric Cartan matrix. And this changes, so it's to Kostya question, this changes to some changes in this QQ bar system and change the, 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 the mutation game rules. But you play the same game of mutation and for instance, it lasts to a SO7 case. And uh, for the question, what span, linear span by Q function to get, you get these numbers, which completely different from dimension of corresponding uh, representation of B3. So it's, it's 12, uh, 7, uh, 13, 21, 28, no, no connection really. So what happens that this number actually hidden the representation of uh, unfolded diagram uh, A5, it's binomial coefficients. So what you discover is that Q system is not representation of B3 any longer. So what is symmetry algebra, it's not, 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 not also seven. For Q system, symmetry algebra will be SL6. Uh, but there is some folding connection. So there is some rules of the folding, uh, which I will fix, but actually we know the answer that it's not even simple folding. There is some folding using automorphisms. By the way, keep, uh, be aware because it's what we're going to do in one other bootstrap. We also will have some automorphisms there. And so there is some rule, there is some interesting shifts in spectral parameter. And the statement, this falls under representation theory, not even of a five, but a twisted affine A5. Uh, and uh, uh, he inside behind that original symmetry, well, you know the quantum attribute belt really on quantum affine, not B3, but it's uh, affinization and some, some stuff. Uh, and uh, Langlands dual, uh, whatever it is, uh, is, is twisted affine. Uh, all right, so this kind of, you can guess it after you become clever enough, you can guess the answer anyway from the beginning. Uh, right, and uh, but also notice that this is six-dimensional representation. It has nothing to do with seven-dimensional representation. So it's actually also six-dimensional representation. When you follow this diagram, it's not B3, it's actually C3, which is symplectic. So just for fun, uh, Q function, uh, so Q function on this node happens to be in representation of SP6. So transfer matrix, in vector representation of SO7 is given by Q function in six-dimensional representation of symplectic group, a completely different group. And this is, this is symplectic structure, it's anti-symmetric formula, not, not symmetric. So when you start from, uh, so what is here what we learned, so in general, when you start from symmetry in your system, uh, to produce Q system, you have to do Langlands duality, and change, after that, things change. So Q system can di uh, obey different symmetry, uh, related by different symmetry compared to original uh, spin chain. Okay, so this gives you an idea how to generate Q systems. Unfortunately, this idea has to be developed to get more interesting results, uh, but at least you get a framework. And now I come back to simple cases, A series, G, but supersymmetric. And we were going to do monodromy bootstrap. Uh, and here I just really want to uh, focus on the main idea. So uh, in this equation, there is tilde and there is star. Tilde means analytic continuation. This is, will be next slide. And star means uh, applying symmetry. Uh, what we learned about symmetries. So Q functions, uh, this green big Q function, the transform and the symmetry group, which is reality Langlands dual to original, uh, to original uh, symmetry group of the integrable model. And uh, uh, this group is realized by matrix is actually I-periodic because it's finite difference equation. Uh, and also because everything was projective in quantum mechanics, we also have to should do explicit rescaling. This is called in this uh, business uh, gauge transformations. So this is our symmetry that we are allowed to use. And also, of course, uh, something like uh, change the diagrams to the opposite diagram, something discrete, like Hasse, duality, swapping groups. So it's called out of the morphisms. So this is a symmetry that you can do. So 
chosen, uh, making your choice, uh, well, this uh, gives you a model. Actually, only chosen automorphism, uh, out automorphism uh, changes the model. Uh, uh, other symmetries are constrained uh, by monodromy bootstrap already. And uh, second is, what is analytic continuation? In Andrea, talk analytic continuation will be noted by gamma. So now I just tell you quickly, uh, so if you think that it's a simple, no, it's not. Because all these Q functions have actually big ladders of branch points. So our system is non-local. It evaluated different points of paper parameter. So it cannot go around branch point. Uh, because if this guy went around this branch point, another guy will go around branch point. You destroy your system like you destroy Y system by trying to make it through. So analytic continuation in just stupid naive wave will not work, will not work. So the idea that we have the symmetries, so this will not work. What we are going to do, we will use symmetries to all the time have absence of branch points while we proceed with analytic continuation. So we start with system, which is analytic in the upper half plane. There is no branch points, and everything is good. Then we go here, staying uh, away from the cuts, and when we are here, we can perform symmetry transformation to make uh, system analytic in the lower half plane. Because cut on the left, uh, we allow to use periodic functions, uh, which we called omega, uh, which is symmetry of our Q system, which have cuts also on the left. So we use omega to create no cuts in lower plane, and we now in lower plane, with after symmetry transformation, we are good, and we go up in the middle, and now we, we use, uh, so we go, go up in the middle, and now we use other functions, which is uh, called mu. They have cut to be outside, otherwise periodic here. That again create a system which is analytic in the up. So you make the full cycle, applying symmetries on the way, and require that this guy is related to the original guy by some way. And uh, now we start to crank uh, machinery. Uh, and if you look on this formula, something you realize explicitly that, you know, after automorphism, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quotient, it's inner, it's uh, some automorphism by inner. So in reality, you cannot just fl flip the Dinkin diagram, you also have to make a symmetry transformation. So when you flip it back and make symmetry transformation, you do not come to original point. So this procedure tells you that having branch cuts is actually, branch cut of square root type is probably not even possible, and usually it's not. And this is a was big uh, revelation for us uh, in this business that actually this branch cut uh, square root type is, is a luxury of ADS5. Uh, generically, we don't expect it. Because of this procedure, it's already, you can see it. And so now, the, the only thing you have to do, you have to tell what symmetry you want. Type option is considered this as a two slash diagram and say that this star means Hodge duality. This means that you flip this function to this function, then you get some equation. This is PMU system, it looks like follows. Uh, whatever it is, but I just want to tell you one theorem. If one requires square root type condition, I want the branch point of square root type. I just, I like ideas five. Then uh, I cannot impose f square equal to one. Uh, by the way, I forgot to say, f square equal to one is zero such condition, which would make from SL2 slash two, PSL2 slash two case. And moreover, maybe should be anti-symmetric. And I got spectral curve like this, only possible option with square root cuts. And this only possible caution is called Hubbard model. We can derive TBA from here. We can derive uh, Leapfull beta equations and Bizer equation of, uh, of them and uh, compare with the result uh, of this group. So this is derivation from a non bootstrap of Hubbard model. Uh, we can also say that star means do not make change. But because monodromy involves a lot of interesting symmetry transformation, it's still non-trivial statement. And we get another model and conjecture that here, First of all, theorem, you cannot make it with square root cuts. It's just impossible. And if you want uh, 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 central charge equal to zero, then conjecture that it's actually spectral curve for DS2 CFT1. And finally, to get DS3 CFT2, we need two Q systems because it's two copies of SL2 slash uh, 2. By the way, there is a quiver desc describing PMU system here. And uh, so what you do, and each continuation actually swaps two guys. So there are some equations, uh, and the conjecture is this, uh, when it's uh, central charge equal to one case, then it's actually spectral curve for DS3 CFT2. And Andrea will speak in detail about details of this curve. They also have derivation, different, and they will, he will speak a lot about this. Interestingly enough, we also have type D model, which is because what you can do, you can uh, map this to uh, this model, and this model map to Hodge dual of this model. So this is actually automorphism of degree four. 
So there is some fancy model, PMUCism is a fancy model, I have no idea what it is physically, which has automorphism to D4 and, uh, well, we do not know what it is. Okay, and so now come to conclusions. So the first conclusion is that we propose to extend normal key functions, vector key functions, whose zeros are bit roots of normal bit equations, to a big class of green Q vectors, really, who covariantly transform under symmetry, lang lanz dual of original symmetry. And all the properties neatly of them are neatly formalized in geometric statement that they form a fused flag, which is a geometric statement, but it's also non-local geometric statement. A fusion is because piece can be different and it should be always true. Uh, a comment, very many different groups work on this in many co corners of the world. I cannot possibly cite everybody, and I apologize for everyone who on the site. It's, uh, we have more than 200 citations in the paper. So this is a very small subset uh, about who, who did Q-System at least. Um, all right. Uh, so for instance, this list doesn't contain anything about Q-operators. It's only about uh, this uh, mutation game story. Uh, uh, right, uh, so, and conclusion number two, uh, that uh, uh, now we have a good intuition about what is Q-system, and we finally can start playing the game of applying monodrobius bootstrap idea. I told you that it's non-trivial because of non-locality. Defining a continuation is hard, but it's possible. And uh, we, uh, we finally got the first predictive statement. Uh, uh, first predicted statement that uh, we got a D3 CFT2 case, conjecturally, when mm, it was not known in the literature before. So it's first time we do something before s something else uh, done by, s by some other method. Uh, and, but now the hope that we can crank it for different algebras and make a DCFT integrability uh, generic. It's not isolated point like it's now, like three cases or four but it can be like systematic for any algebra for all the type of parameters. So it's like becoming its own class, like uh, elliptic trigonometric on top of this also idea of safety. So it will be like a big thing and uh, it could, could be interesting for different reason. So for instance, uh, what I describe, it seem work for excellence uh, well, we, we have to check still details, but preliminary it's still okay. So it will be something new. And future goal of course is PK. So Kola, we are we working on it. Uh, I did not uh, finish with it. Uh, to fully say that everything is good and nice. Uh, of course, D21 alpha is like uh, holy grail uh, to see that it really works because nobody knows what is there. And if people, I know why QRL algebras are interesting, so people who know it as well speak with me. We, we will have something to share. And uh, finally, notice that with flux, it can be interesting because apparently the there is no finite dimensional representation of finally algebras are there. Okay. And finally, the very last slide, all the system is a universal algebra, algebra geometric structure, which appears in all whole big uh, list of different uh, groups. And we have a program about it in Simon Center. So if you go to Santa Barbara, you can stop over, right? If you don't go to Santa Barbara, you just go directly to us. And uh, yeah, so you're welcome to come. And if you want to work on this, I have much more questions than uh, capability to solve them, physical. So if you want to work on it, please uh, con contact me and we can work together. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, um. So it's time for questions. Okay, first question. So uh, even if you didn't quite go into detail, I have a bit of a um, curiosity about ADS3, which maybe is a bit also more general, because in the ADS3 case, there are massive and massless excitations. Mm -hmm. And if I look at the S matrix, I forget where I get this integrable model from. It seems that the S matrix bootstrap with fusion and crossing and so on, it closes just for the massive guys. So it seems that I could construct naively a, an integrable model just with the massive guys. And in terms of the sort of symmetries that I would have and representation, it would look very similar if I did, for instance, TBA. And my question is, if that is true, there should be some sort of ambiguity uh, when you construct a quantum spectral curve just from PSU 1, 1 slash 2, essentially, uh, to get the full model with the massless modes the, the, or the model with only the massive, or maybe something in between with just uh, you know, something else that completes the model. Um, what's your take on this? 
well, first answer, uh, there is no fixed answer for massless nodes. Uh, but uh, actually by experience with Hubbard model, we see um, massless mode sourcing massive mode by fixing clever results on zeros of, of uh, function f that we have. And function f appear indirectly in a DS3C spectral curve. So this observation uh, suggests, uh, and this is current belief, which is not confirmed yet, that massless mode is very special zeros of the same Q functions. So there will be no need to add extra symmetries, extra Q functions node. It will be just there, just as extra zeros which live on the cut. On the cut, things are problematic. Because it's on the cut, it's periodized and become infinite number of zeros. And it's hard to treat, hard to make asymptotic, but eventually hope that we will fix it. And well, then we will check if it's true. But for the moment, this is uh, what we believe. There will be no need to extra sync. And also, I will be happy to do this because I have no idea how to do U1. U1 is the one which is so empty that I do not know what to ask about it. Uh, no, I, I would say counter curve automatically has massless modes because you have to consider all possible solutions. And one of them will be massless modes. It's just hard to physically see the solution. Uh, hi. Uh, so the question is, so I, you can generate equation for quantum spectral curve, but big mystery, at least for me, is always why the set of solution is a set of isolated points. So set of what? Isolated points, right? So the spectrum, the spectral curve generates is non-empty and like non-continuous, but a set of isolated states. Uh, if I discrete, you mean? Sorry? I don't get, what do you refer to isolated point? What do you mean by isolated points? Like at the end of the day, the claim would be that uh, this gives the spectrum of the theory, which is yeah. a discrete spectrum. Yes. Right? So, but from the equations, you can't really count the number of uh, degrees of freedom. Ah, in a sense, only... will it generate a line of solutions or like a plane of solutions or a, a collection of isolated points? You see? No, but well, uh, I, I also am not sure. Uh, isolated points of series is uh, just this set of solutions. I don't know. So uh, once you fix coupling, the size of the cut, you just get a discrete, discrete set of spectrum. Solution. Yes. So how how to prove that in general? That's the question. No, but I also can get TBA from here. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, so for instance, for Hubbard, uh, you can uh, get Lebu equations, but also you can get TBA equations. What will change? Yeah, but TBA equation is uh, defined up to an un undefined set of driving terms, uh, right? Which uh, could also be continuous. Right. So the statement is as usual. So Q system is set of uh, all this Q system, including Monoribus trap as well, is a set of functional relation. And Monoribus trap fixes a little bit its analytic structure through a Minohilbert problem. But what it does for you, okay, it's not polynomial, it's not trigonometric polynomials, it's this uh, modification. But then the logic is as usual. We have to produce, inside there is hidden source terms, and uh, there are source terms. And uh, so, uh, source terms come from extra analytic structure requirements for, for, for your functions. And now you have to play the game, I want this source term, and this will reproduce that theory. Okay? No, just for me, it's always a surprise. So uh, whether there is uh, one isolated non-solutions uh, non or a continuum of them. Uh, so you just have to hope uh, that it, it works. Uh, if you have ideas how to prove it uh, in general, it would be helpful you know, to count number of solutions. You have set of equation. Now you, uh, one should ask existence and uh, uniqueness, uh, basically. Well, I mean, uh, then I would do it like in a DS5. I go to the coupling, and there we almost have a proof that it's only that possible. I mean, but I'm not sure. It's, it's a little bit. It's next level question. Of the heart. Uh, 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 I have two little questions. Uh, maybe you had something in your transparency, but very briefly about it. Uh, uh, then for uh, A algebras, uh, there are two useful notions, uh, useful uh, equations to solve for the spectrum of uh, integral models. Uh, one is quite old, it's Baxter equation. Yeah, which is very useful. And another thing which was newer uh, was the Vronskian 
bit equa uh, Vronsky and bit equations, where you formulate in one single equation the whole nested problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the algebras, in our work uh, with uh, Gunael and uh, Ruben, um, uh, we had this problem that we had uh, Vronsky and beta equation, but it was sort of, uh, it was not clear whether it's uh, overcomplete, undercomplete. Uh, mm, there were, there were more over. equations than... Uh, the second answer, right? Yeah. Because and the, 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 the second thing is about uh, Baxter equation. Yeah. Baxter equation is uh, not finite. And that's why not very useful in these systems. So can you comment on it? Do you yes. have some progress on it? So, so, uh, so, right. So I flushed through this because it was, uh, but yeah, I can tell you a little bit. Um, so normal bit equations, like uh, it's or QQBAR systems, are uh, distributed along, um, mm, okay, uh, let, let me find it, okay, um, uh, here. So normal bit equations are distributed along uh, Dinkin diagram, like have A is not of Dinkin diagram. To get to something which you would call Vronskin bit equation, we have to focus on the last node of Dinkin diagram. And in, in GLN, in case, there are two last possibilities, and both of them quite equivalent. And this you get normal Vronskin bit equations, okay? Uh, th which is nice and clever. So now the game uh, to fix Vronskin bit equation, we can fix our either on uh, fermionic nodes, or on a vector nodes. I, I know the question, so I will, I will answer it fully. Uh, so, uh, so for harmonic nodes, we found these equations, and uh, we found conditions to make it complete. Uh, what, what you propose is over complete, and we know why. Okay, so basically, uh, but I will explain what you propose. So what you propose roughly is the following. So let's uh, take uh, uh, this equal to one, it should be u to the power of something here in reality. And let's use this projection property. The scalar product of vector is zero. So I think this is what, uh, what you're proposing. And this you say, okay, this should be beta equations. Because it, it, let's say that this is a Q function in a vector representation. Scalar product is one, is normal quantization condition, and project of zero is reduces number of function to the normal one. Uh, so if you try to solve it, it's actually written here, can be used as version of the equations. So if you try to solve it, you will get too many solutions, but you have to impose only one more constraint. Is that V plus, which V minus, is divisible by U to the power L, which is not part of these equations. So you take many equations and change the constraint and conjecture that it will be complete in generic situation. That's true. Is this is answers? Yes. I can write you equation. Level. <laughs> so uh, so what, what you did, you missed one kinematical constraint. It's not dynamical. It's, uh, it's, you're basically computing for different representation of spin chain, uh, which is bigger in size. Uh, if you add one more constraint, it will be correct representation of spin chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, second, about Baxter. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, we thought a lot, we speak with you, and we thought a lot about Baxter. So what you want from Baxter is that it's a linear equation uh, whose, uh, uh, whose solution is Q function. And now, whose coefficients are invariant on the action of Langlands dual that I introduced. So if you require the coefficient invariant of Langlands dual, you will, uh, by action with this symmetry, you will, of course, uh, generate all the big Q vector present here. So it's automatically, it doesn't matter how it, hard you try, it will be always that huge thing. And if you want these two things, you're doomed. But what is good about, but, some, what, but now, if you don't want to write uh, a linear equation, but you want to make uh, a, a generating function, like ratio of two things, like Kuniba, like you did for super case, uh, then it's more optimistic, uh, but, well, we can discuss in the break. But I told you why it will be problematic, be just normal one. It will not exist because it's, it doesn't, it doesn't satisfy the required symmetry of the system. No. Thank you. No. So, okay, I think it's time. Mm. It's, it's time for coffee break, mm. and it lets me at 10.25. <laughs> <laughs>